a passionate crowd here. As you see that Benavides Jr. three years younger than Torres. Torres has the height and the reach advantage. Rules of the fight all night long. There is no three knockdown roll. Only the referee can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the fight is official after four rounds have been completed. Well, it is an all Benavides doubleheader here tonight at the Footprint Center, a homecoming for both Benavides. First up, though, it is Jose Benavides Jr. who said, I'm going to break your ribs to his opponent, Emmanuel Torres. For Torres, he did not come all this way from Argentina to just lie down and take a loss. He is looking to make a statement and show the world that he belongs on this level. For Jose Benavides Jr., you look at the layoff of about three years, but I take that with the grain of salt because a year of that surrounded COVID-19 and it looks like we are turning the corner in regards to that. So thankfully that is hopefully in our rear view mirror, but this means a lot for Jose Benavides Jr. who hasn't been in the ring since he was 25. But I think for him, the fact that he was fighting on a consistent basis, it allowed his body to heal up, it allowed his mind to get right. And sometimes when you do something for so long, taking a little bit of absence and a step away from the ring, it makes the heart grow fonder for the sport. And for Jose Benavides Jr., he knows what's in front of him. His father said, listen, he's got two kids. He is rededicated to the sport. And I think we're gonna see the best version of my son. There is one of his lovely children. There is his daughter, lovely wife as well. And we're getting this party started here at the Footprint Center. Ray Flores here also want to send a special hello to my outstanding producer, Sam Rupinoff, who's been doing an amazing job over the past several months. And great to kick off what is no doubt going to be a combustible night of boxing here in the desert. Phoenix has been so accommodating to us. The fans have been extremely open and welcoming. I've enjoyed talking with the fans here all over Phoenix. It is great to be here in this passionate fight town, the hometown of Michael Carball, the International Boxing Hall of Famer. You remember his epic confrontations against Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez. And now we set it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Footprint Center here in the beautiful city of Phoenix, Arizona. Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action coming your way and it's all brought to you by TGB Promotions, Samson Boxing and Showtime. We're also sponsored by GEICO and our opening attraction is presented in association with Payne Boxing. Introducing our three judges, scoring our first attraction from ringside, all from the state of Arizona. We have Dennis O'Connell, Ruben Rocky Taylor, and Chris Wilson. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Chris Flores. All right, fans, here we go. 10 rounds of boxing in a middleweight co-main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with black trim, hailing from Buenos Aires, Argentina. He weighed in at 157 and one half pounds. His record stands at 17 wins, three losses, with five wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Emanuel Torres. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks, red trim with gold, training in Seattle by way of his home in Phoenix, Arizona. He weighed in at 158 and three quarter pounds. His record, 27 wins, one defeat, 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight making his return to the ring, here is the former world title challenger introducing uh, Merciless Jose Benavides Jr. And what 
once again a referee in charge now to give instructions Chris Flores okay gentlemen we went over the instructions in the dressing room I expect a clean fight these trunks are good right here these are a little high so I'm gonna let you work right there touch them up now and go back to your corner Toca la guantes. So Chris Flood is a referee in charge. No relation to me or my brother Miguel whatsoever. But we are all set and ready to go with Jose Benavides Jr. You heard the very favorable crowd response for Jose Benavides Jr. Emmanuel Torres looking to shock the world. We are underway. Double jab followed by that right hand by Torres. Great to be here at the home of the Phoenix Suns, the footprint center here in Phoenix. Benavides was out of it saying, I'm going to break down the body of Torres. Benavides staying out of the way of danger, but Torres looking to open up. Torres with a very low knockout percentage. There's the right hand right in the abdominal region of Benavides. Yeah, followed by right hand by Torres. Benavides. There's a right hand down the center. Good jab by Benavides. He's looking to cut the distance. There's a right hand spraying Torres. Left hook there by Benavides. Left hook caught the attention of Torres. Benavides looking to cut the distance off. There's a left hook to the body by Benavides. Right by Torres as he retaliates. Benavides a right hand followed by a left hook to the body. Benavides with a high guard. He looks to whack away upon Torres. There's a right on the left side of the head of Torres. Under a minute to go here in the first stanza. There's a right to the body by Benavides. Stiff jab there by Benavides. There's a right hand followed by a left to the body. Hey, get that up. Get it up. Chris Flores telling Benavides to keep his punches up. There's a left hook to the body by Benavides. Final moments of the first. Jose Benavidez looking to shake off some of that ring rust after being away from the ring for over 36 months. And that'll conclude the first. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Why you use the jab and then bring your hands up? When you throw the jab, bring your hands up. Make sure to come back, bring your defense back. We're doing well, we're doing well. Round, two. Round number two, this one is scheduled for 10 with Jose Benavides Jr. and Emmanuel Torres. Double jab there by Torres. Benavides looking to unload that home run shot. 
Through that left hook. Now Torres using his jab, and now Benavides trying to scoot closer. There's a right to the body by Benavides. And chance of Jose echoing here at the footprint center. Total punch has landed through the first round. Benavidez 11 to 34 for a 32% connect percentage. Torres, who was, you threw more than double, landed 12 of 77 for a 15% connect percentage. Big right hand that backed up Torres. Took to the body by Benavides, just over the halfway mark of the second. There's a right hand connecting on the left side of the head of Torres. Torres, I don't think, has the punching power to keep Benavides off of him. He is slick and he has some skill, but Benavides, as he continues to warm up, if he doesn't slow down, he could probably get this guy out of there. That's just from my vantage point. Especially if he starts to hammer away in the body like he just did right there. They're literally right in front of us. Our broadcast position. Under 37 seconds remaining here in the second stanza. Benavides popping that jam, starting to get more comfortable to try to find his rhythm. There's a right that missed by Torres. There's a left to the right side of the body of Torres, and that ends the second. instructing their fighters to attack the body. We'll see what happens as we head into round number three. Benavides right away tries to take the center of the ring and no doubt trying to prove that he is the aggressor. There's a right to the left side of the ribcage of Torres. Jams through the second round. Benavides six of 19 for a 31% connect percentage. Torres three of 77. He's been throwing a lot of jabs, but they have been missing. So the defensive ability of Jose Benavides, and there was a nice little combination, but again, didn't have much behind it for Emmanuel Torres. That was a left hook to the body by Benavides. Benavides aiming to come forward, has that bull-like mentality as we are seeing being displayed here. And you wonder the kind of emotion that he is fighting with, him being a... Phoenix resident, there's a nice jab followed by a right hand. The best punch of the fight for Emmanuel Torres. Torres, 31 years of age from Argentina. Jose Benavides Jr., 28 years of age from right here in Phoenix, now training out in Washington with his father, but they are very proud of where they're from here in Phoenix. 
and chants of Jose that are echoing here in a Phoenix. There's a nice combination there by Benavidez. Benavidez looking to pounce right over on the Torres. Good stiff jab there by Torres. Benavidez under a minute to go here in the third. There's a left to the body by Benavidez. Good stiff jab there by Torres. Benavidez looking for his opening. There's a left hook by Benavidez. There's a right on the left side of the ear of Torres. He gets caught with the right hand from Torres. So Benavidez had a moment, but as did Torres. He's had probably his best account of himself here in this third round. There's a right to the body, and Benavidez throwing one at the end, and Chris Flores warning him as to say, that is not allowed. Larry Fitzgerald from the Arizona Cardinals, and the fans erupt here at the Footprint Center. This one is scheduled for 10 with Jose Benavides Jr. and Emmanuel Torres of Argentina. Power punches landed, thrown through three. Benavides Jr., 27 of 81 for a 33% connect percentage. Torres, 29 of 99 for a 29% connect percentage. Benavides pops him with a left hook. Benavides starting to gain some confidence from a punching power standpoint. I think Benavidez is aiming to try to close the distance. And he goes to Southpaw and he hits Torres to the body. Chris Torres warning him. Benavidez about hitting below the belt. Much to the chagrin of the crowd here in Phoenix. They booed the judges during Jimmy Lennon's introductions. I've never heard such a thing. There's a big straight left that popped Torres. There's a right to the body by Torres. Double jab there by Torres. There's a right hand echoing shot. There's a right to the body by Benavides. Another right to the body is Jose Benavides Jr. starting to really get in and he stuck out his tongue at Torres. Some gamesmanship being exhibited by the 28-year-old in Jose Benavides Jr. As I mentioned, this is the first time he's been inside the ring since October of 2018. He literally hasn't fought this decade for crying out loud. There's a right hand on the left ear of Benavides.
Good stiff jab by Benavides. Big left hook connecting. Blasted away upon Torres. Followed by an overhand right by Benavides. We near the final moments of the fourth between Jose Benavides Jr. and Emmanuel Torres. And speaking of the Benavides family, the two-time super middleweight champion of the world, David Benavides is standing by with a champ right, well, Thank you very much, David. As you prepare for your fight, how difficult is it for you to sit in here and watch your brother? You know, it's a little nerve-wracking because, you know, every time I fight my, uh, watch my brother fight, I get a little bit nervous. But, you know, we're, um, we're taking care of business, getting warm up. As you can see, I got a little sweat, so we're ready to go. How do you think he's doing? He's doing really good, man. You know, I think he's uh, getting off the little ring rust that he's had. He hasn't uh, had a fight in three years, but I think, feel like he's doing well. Now, you had COVID just a couple of months ago. Uh, how much did it deplete you and take out of you? Well, I mean, I was out for COVID, you know, for like about a month. But after that, you know, I think uh, I just went back into work. You know, I couldn't think that it affected me that much, even if it did. But I feel great. You know, I had a great training camp, you know, 15 rounds of sparring. 16, 17 is the most I did and running seven miles a day. So I felt, you know, I feel amazing. No lingering effects. Lingering effects. What about Davis? He comes in on, on short notice here, here to fight you. What concerns you most about him? Um, the thing that concerns me most about him is that he's a live dog and, you know, he knows this is a big opportunity for him. But, you know, like I said, I train extremely hard for this fight. I prepare like it was a world title fight. So I'm going to go in there and take care of business. David, best of luck. We'll talk to you after the fight. Thank you, brother. Back up. So David Benavides said he's been sparring 15, 16 rounds. That just goes to show you the confidence that Benavides has heading into this matchup against Kyron Davis. This is a very, without a doubt, they have packed this place here at the Footprint Center, at least the lower bowl. And now Benavides looking to go on the attack, and he gets popped with a counter right from Emmanuel Torres. And now look at Benavides go. Benavides is just a born to be a fighter, both Benavides brothers. There's a right hand over the top by Benavides. A left hook by Benavides. Benavides looking to hammer away upon Emmanuel Torres. Oh! 
look at some of the action from the fifth. There's a nice right hand that landed there by Benavides. in the United States and was highly touted coming out of the amateur system. He's coming in, he's really trying to throw with bad intentions, but so far his prediction of being able to bust up the ribs and tear up the body of Torres has not been fulfilled. Jabs through five rounds, 13 of 47 for a 27% connect percentage for Benavides Jr. Torres, 11 of 155, just a 7% connect percentage. It's clear that Benavides Jr. is the one who focuses more on the power and with the jab and the pure boxing skill is Emmanuel Torres, but he is unorthodox. There's a left hook to the body by Benavides. And for those of you that are at home, wherever you're joining us around the world, I gotta tell you that this fan base here in Phoenix is lively, they are so enthusiastic, and I love coming to these fight towns that used to be very big and well known as we're just at the midway point of the sixth round, but when I think of towns and cities like this here in the United States, I think of, you know, at one time, Phoenix was known for Michael Carbohol, who had those wars with Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez and had memorable moments here. Carbohol, I believe, opened up this building back in his America West Arena. This is back in 1992. That was when I was just but a young kid. And I also think of Albuquerque, New Mexico, when Johnny Tapia and Danny Romero were out there in Albuquerque and really making noise at the at the pit, the hometown of the New Mexico uh, Lobos, the college basketball team in New Mexico. The Southwest is a very good area for fights, but it has been missing stars. And here in Phoenix, David Benavides is open to become and showcase that he can come back and have hometown fights. And we are heading down the stretch of the sixth round. But Jose Benavides Jr., as he is older than David by four years, they thought that he was going to be the next big star. But he has been, he had that opportunity to get Stan Scarf and his performances have been underwhelming. But speaking of the Benavides family, David Benavides is taking on Kyron Davis in our main event. Kyron Davis looking upset, Benavides. All right, Noel, thank you very much. Kyron, it's so calm in here. Quiet. Are you always this at ease before a fight? Most of the time. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be. How do, you, how do you approach a fighter like David, who has so much behind him already, uh, all the accolades in the world, a huge future, and you come into his own backyard on short notice? How do you approach something like this and try and be effective early so that you can minimize some of that? Um, I approach you with confidence, I'm calm, and you know, uh, just believing in myself. That's really, that's really it. And how much belief, how much belief do you have in yourself at this time in your career when you know that so much is riding on this? Um, enough to win the fight. Man of a few words, we'll talk to you afterwards. Best of luck. Thank you. Hey, Cameron. Kyron Davis has never been one to go ahead and really talk a lot. He likes to do his talking inside the ring. And now Benavides starting off strong here in the seventh. Look at this action. Here he comes, throwing machine gun-like burst towards Fran Emmanuel Torres. Stiff jab by Benavides, followed by the right hand. You know Benavides wants to get that finish here tonight in front of the hometown fans and his 
friends and his family. See, total punches landed, thrown through six. Benavides Jr., 74 of 221 for a 33% connect percentage. Torres, 82 of 394 for a 20% connect percentage. Torres nearly doubling the punch output of Benavides, but Benavides more selective, but he is landing the more authoritative shots. There's a right hand on the top of the head of Torres. There's a left to the body by, or right to the left side of the body of Torres. Torres got hurt with the right to the body, and then he gets popped. Benavides came forward, he had a counter shot, but I thought Torres was hurt momentarily with the body shot from Benavides. We're at the halfway point of the seven. I thought Torres was hurt with the body shot. He winced and grimaced. But as Benavides Jr. came forward with the reckless abandon, he ate a counter right hand, thus stopping him in his tracks and preventing him from putting together a combination upon Torres. There's a left hook to the chest of Torres. Under a minute to go here in the seventh. Torres. Jab followed by a right hand by the 31-year-old Argentinian. There's a chopping overhand right by Benavides. Moments of the seventh. And that'll end round number seven. see this counter right hand by Torres, bang. If Torres had even halfway decent punching power, that could be problematic for Benavides. I mean, the counter shots are still an issue, but Benavides has a good shin, and it will take him some time. It has to take quite a bit of firepower to put him away. Just ask Terrence Crawford. Crawford, it took him in the championship rounds for him to put away Benavides. That being the only loss, and look at Benavides start off. Very strong here in the eighth. He's going right after Torres, trying to hammer away. If I were to describe Jose Benavides Jr., I would label him as a slugger. Because the guy just likes to put his, plant his feet right down to the mouthpiece and just throw with bad intentions. He's got his hands by his side as to indicate to Torres, I don't respect your punching power. There's a right to the body by Benavides. But in the same token, he just got popped with a three-punch combination. But Benavides shrugged it off as to say, is that all you got? And again, the chance of Jose that are reverberating here at the Footprint Center here in Phoenix. Good jab by Benavides. There's a left to the body by Benavides. We're at the midway portion of the eighth. 
On a right hand by Torres. There's a beautiful right hand that caught the jaw of Torres momentarily wobbled him. And a right to the body by Benavides. I think Benavides feels like he might be wearing down Torres. There's a right on the left side of the face of Torres. I would like to see Benavides enter more with the jam, set up a body shot, and then come upstairs. Nice right hand by the 28-year-old out of Phoenix in Jose Benavides Jr. There's an overhand right by Benavides. and he unloads a left hook. He is finding a home for that right to the body is Benavides and also that left hook, bang, another left hook, catching the attention of Torres and now Benavides looking to end the eighth with the flurry, much to the delight of the fans here in Phoenix. You see this combination by Benavides. And I think this is the left hook that we see. There's that jab by Benavides. against Terrence Crawford for the welterweight championship of the world. That was over three years ago. That was October of 2018. Now fighting under the Premier Boxing Champions banner and campaigning at 154. Taking on Emmanuel Torres. Big right hand snapping back the head of the Argentinian. The Argentinian steps in, tries to throw, but to no avail. Michael Carbajal sitting in the front row. The International Boxing Hall of Famer. Now Benavidez driving and pressing Torres against the ropes. Jeff followed by a right to the sh chest of Benavides by Torres. 100 seconds to go here in the ninth. There's an overhand right by Benavides. A left hook followed by a right that was punctuated in that combination from the Phoenix native. I don't know if Benavides is slowing down, but a lot of his shots, although they are effective, if I'm being critical, they are winging shots, they aren't straight shots. Some of them are missing the mark and now he sticks out his tongue towards Torres. But I think that Benavides is, from a conditioning standpoint, I think the layoff might be affecting him because he is slowing down. And this crowd, they want, uh, they want action throughout the entirety of the fight. Under a minute to go here in the ninth as Torres pops Benavides once again. And a counter right hand, snapping back the head of Benavides. Benavides walks right through it. There's 
It's a counter right hand once again by Torres. A left hook upstairs by Benavides. As we head down the stretch of this 10 round super welterweight co-main event between Jose Benavides Jr. and Manuel Torres of Argentina. And again, Benavides ending with the flurry as we advance to the final round. There is the, the daughter of Jose Benavides Jr. He's a father of two. Taking a look at Jose Benavidez Jr. Hey, nice right hand snapping back the head of Emmanuel Torres. As we head towards the final round here between Jose Benavides Jr. and Emmanuel Torres. And chance of Jr. echoing here. And this could be problematic for Jose Benavides Jr. Unofficially, the ringside observers have Torres ahead. 87-84 heading into this final round. This could be extremely detrimental if Benavides suffers a loss to Emmanuel Torres. Torres is boxing well, he's setting traps. He is outworking Jose Benavides Jr. This would be disastrous if you think about making your comeback and you fall to an unheralded 31-year-old out of Argentina in Emmanuel Torres. So unofficially, ringside observers have it 87-84 for Emmanuel Torres. Now, I don't score based on the fact that as I call a fight, it's rather difficult to pay attention to the nuances of what you are watching scoring each individual round, which is why I wanted to bring it up due to the fact that it was brought to my attention. Nice right hand by Torres snapping back the head of Benavides. Could we be in line to see a major upset here in Phoenix with the 31-year-old Emmanuel Torres whose biggest win came against Cleotis Pendarvis, who is a fringe, and I say a fringe, or was a fringe, super lightweight contender. And for Jose Benavides Jr. under a minute to go here in the 10th. However, the judges tonight, all from Arizona, Dennis O'Connell, Rocky Taylor, and Chris Wilson. Will they be swayed by the crowd's reaction and this very pro Benavides crowd? This is a passionate fan base. They are lively. They are not afraid to give their opinions and talk about drama in the fact, under 30 seconds to go, that the crowd booed the judges during the introductions. How apropos would that be if Torres were to get the decision against Jose Benavidez Jr. And the crowd booing for some reason. I think they are saying, and Benavidez saying, come on, fight me, man. But Torres feels like he's got the fight won. Benavidez looking to end the, the fight with a flurry once again, and that ends the fight, and I think that Torres might be in line for a potential upset. And there is a, just a visibly disappointed Jose Benavides Jr. in adulation from Emmanuel Torres. Again though, how do the judges have this one scored? You see a little bit of a mouse above the left eye of Jose Benavidez Jr. And 
I could honestly see this going in the favor of Manuel Torres. I thought he was boxing well, I thought he was moving well. Benavides was coming forward, but there are some rather tense moments in favor here in Phoenix at the Footprint Center. And Benavides touching that mouse, it's like a hematoma underneath or above the left eye of Jose Benavides Jr. Very curious to see how the judges have this one. As we take a look at the end of the round. And here's this the jab by Emmanuel Torres, nice jab. Total punches landed, thrown in the fight. Double jab by Torres. Benavides, 122 of 375 for a 32% connect percentage. Torres, 135 of 612 for a 22% connect percentage. So, Torres nearly doubled, or was close to doubling the output of Benavides. He landed 13 more punches. But again, you have to wonder how the judges have this one scored. So it all depends on if you are judging the work rate of Torres or if you're judging the bigger, more eye-catching shots in Benavides. But regardless of how this one goes, I think that for Jose Benavides Jr., he had a rather lackluster performance in what was supposed to be a showcase fight. And we are awaiting Jimmy Lennon Jr. is talking with the, trying to gather the scorecards. When they take this amount of time to go ahead, I wonder, and here's Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Rocky Taylor, scores about 96 to 94 in favor of Jose Benavides. Judges Dennis O'Connell and Chris Wilson both score the bout. 95-95, even a draw. The decision is a majority draw. So majority draw, and that is home cooking. If I saw it, Jose Benavides Jr. lucky that he got away with this one with a draw. I think that was probably the best worst case scenario for Benavides Jr., who looked oh, very much. rather pedestrian. Here's Jim Gray. To the majority draw, winning on one card, a draw on the other two. I mean, I, I beat him every round. He was just running. I don't know how I got a draw. He run it back. I mean, he kept running the whole fight. Like I was landing more punches. He wasn't really landing anything on me. But I mean, what could I do? How would you assess your performance? I beat him. I beat him. I thought I beat him. You know, he kept running. He didn't want to stay in the pocket. He wasn't hitting me with any hard, but I mean, I, like I said, I can't do anything. The judge's decisions. Was it hard for you to get a rhythm, and was there rust after the three years? I mean, I felt good. I just kept holding, kept hitting me after the, he said stop, and then kept running. I mean, it's all good. You had said before the fight that the leg will probably always be an issue. How do you feel the leg held up tonight after being tested? Uh, the leg's good. The leg's good. I'm good. What will you do now? Another fight with, back to train. with the manual? Run him, I'm running that next time I stop him if he don't run. 